a causa today, and uh, I know the name sounds weird, and uh, let me tell you about the ingredients, because those are really weird. It's sort of the idea of making mashed potatoes, uh, or a potato mash, I, I guess, but it's there's no cream, there's no butter, it's not hot, it's room temperature, or actually cold, and it's normally paired with seafood, some sort of seafood salad. So, just wait for it, because it's going to throw you off, but until you taste it, you will agree with me that it's pretty tasty, and it's going to shock your friends, and, and they're going to love it. Today we're going to make this awesome Peruvian dish, which is called causa con atún, which translates to, I guess, causa, which is a potato, sort of like a citrusy potato dish, and we stuff it with tuna. Normally in Peru, they do it with like a citrus tuna, the canned kind of tuna, but today we're going to sort of like uh, elevate it a little bit, we're going to make it with ahi tuna. So when we start this dish, we're going to need potatoes, right? It's a potato dish, of course. So we're going to need to boil some potatoes. So here, you're just going to... And, and how many potatoes do you need? I don't know. Are you feeding two people? Are you feeding four people? Are you feeding eight people? So it all depends. A potato about this size is good for one person for this dish. This isn't a main dish. This is an appetizer. So I have four potatoes here. We're going to cover them with cold water and a good teaspoon of salt. And we're going to bring it to a boil and then lower the heat a little bit. We're going to cook them, uh, boil them until they're nice and soft. Then we're going to peel them. And then we're going to Go ahead and uh, mash them, right? Now that we completed the boiling of the potato and the mashing of the potato, this is what it's going to look like. So there's nothing on it except the warm sort of mashed potatoes, right? So normally when you have something like this, you think of mashed potatoes. So the next thing we do is add cream and butter and salt and maybe some garlic. And then you roast the turkey and here we are at Thanksgiving, right? But this is completely different. We're going to throw you off because we're going to make them citrusy. Weird, right? I know. So, but wait, you're going to taste them and you're going to be really happy. So, potatoes here so far, then we're going to add some lime juice. If you don't have limes, but you have lemons, please don't stop making this dish. Just use lemons. It's okay. I'm not going to get offended. If you find any Peruvian guys that are offended or ladies that are offended, then I would just stop talking to them. <laughs> so, we have some limes here. This is four potatoes. How much lime are we going to put in here? You know, limes are a natural thing, so there's no, like, tablespoon or, or ounce in a lime, it is whatever it is, right? So before I cut these limes, this is another little secret, we're going to roll them on the counter. I've heard of people putting them in the microwave, I think that's kind of silly. So just roll them until you feel, so a lime has these little bubbles of juice, of lime juice, that's how you get it out. So what we're doing is we're aiding or easing that juice so it comes out, right? So we have our limes cut, then we're going to add them to our potatoes. I know it's weird, but wait. So this is a squeezer. If you don't have a squeezer, you can use your hands. Um, we're probably gonna go with two limes. I like keeping a bowl in the kitchen so I can use it as a like portable trash can that I can then dump out or compost or whatever. So we're gonna add the lime juice in here. And like I said, I think for the amount of potatoes, two limes are good, but you definitely want to taste the limes. I think because of the limes is why this dish pairs so well with se uh, seafood which is what we're doing today. Um, lime juice is in. And then I want to talk to you about what is probably the most important ingredient in Peruvian cooking, which is the ají amarillo, which means yellow pepper. Um, as you can see, unless all Peruvians are colorblind, it really isn't yellow, it's orange, right? But for some reason, and I'm not going to fight them over it, uh, they call it orange, or they call it yellow pepper, but it should really be called orange pepper. Anyways, Spice-wise, it's less spicy than a jalapeno, much less spicier than like a habanero, but the flavor profile is so rounded and so good. It's almost fruity. It's not a bell pepper because it definitely has spice and you definitely want to be careful with it, but this is it. You're going to find this throughout a lot of Peruvian recipes and uh, you can find this nowadays in a lot of uh, Latin supermarkets. It's going to be in the frozen section. There really isn't much of this fresh. So you're going to find them in a bag, in a frozen section, and then this is what it looks like. I just basically cut it lengthwise, and we're going to remove the seeds. Why are we doing that? To take some of that heat out, right? So the, the heat of our pepper lives in the vein and on the seeds. So we're going to remove this. Go ahead and wear gloves if, gloves if you want, uh, or if you forgot to put the gloves on, 
make sure that you wash your hands and make sure you don't touch your eyes. Don't go put eye makeup right after this. Uh, I guess you can, but you're going to burn. Uh, and then we're going to end up with this. Once you have this product, what I like to do is fast boil them until they're soft. And I like to throw an onion in there, like a white piece of onion, and then we blend it. And once it's blended, it's going to last you for a while in the fridge. So once it's blended, it's going to look like this. So this is basically ahi paste. Uh, and some markets have it like that, but I like to make my own. So this is important for a lot of dishes that you're going to watch me make uh, if you become a fan of the show. So um, potatoes with lime, ahi paste comes in, right? How much ahi paste? Depends on how many potatoes you have here. We have four potatoes here. I'm going to start with a good teaspoon, tablespoon goes in there, and then we're going to add some oil. Oil, uh, normally I would use like extra virgin olive oil, but not in here, because you don't want the flavor of the oil to compete with the potato. So we're just going to add a little bit of oil. This is just canola oil. And then we're going to add some salt, because potatoes love salt, right? You won't be able to taste anything unless it has the salt in there. And then we're going to go in with our hands. And we're going to sort of mash it and make sure that the oil and the chili and the salt mix well together. So we're mashing away, right? It's starting to come together. Uh, the color has changed because of the chili pepper, and that's, that's a good thing. And then I can see it still sticks to my hand a little bit. So we're going to add a little bit more oil. Just enough that you can sort of... Uh, get it to not stick to your to your hands. And another important thing about cooking, even though this isn't really the final dish, is to taste. People sometimes make these dishes that have like five different elements in it, and then they taste it together at the end. But you want to taste every element, right? There's no going back if it's already plated. So we're going to taste for salt, we're going to taste for the amount of chili, and we're going to taste for the amount of wine. So make yourself a little bowl of this. And yeah, the first time you taste this, it's going to taste Kind of interesting because it's citrusy potatoes. Yeah, we're almost there. I think it just needs a little bit more salt, but the spice is there. And we're going to add a little bit more oil. And then I'm going to show you the next step. So. So the next part of the dish is going to make this tuna salad, which is not your classic tuna salad with mayo and celery and onion. This is going to be more of an Asian version of tuna salad. And the first thing you're going to notice is this big, nice piece of tuna, right? When you do tuna and you're going to eat it raw like this, you want to make sure you tell your fish guy or lady that you want sushi grade tuna. If you don't do that and you get sick, don't come calling me because I told you, right? So for this, we're going to do sort of a tartare. We're not going to mince it to the point where it looks like ground beef because then might as well just use ground beef. And uh, we're not going to need this big, big piece of tuna for this dish, so we're going to save some. And then you can, you know, keep it in the refrigerator, sear it, and make a little tuna dish with it. Don't obviously let it go to waste. I just, they had this beautiful piece, and I felt like I should share it with you guys. So, so here I am doing that. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to cut whatever I'm going to need for this dish. The easiest way to do that is to cut it on uh, sort of like sections. Uh, that are nice and thin. Once again, we're not going to mince it where you don't recognize that it's tuna, uh, but I think that should be more than enough for the dish. So we're going to move this to the side, um, and then we're going to sort of uh, pile it on top of each other, and we're going to cut it on strips. Uh, if it's slippery, it's because it's tuna. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just fresh fish. Uh, and whenever you're cooking, just pay attention to what you're doing. If it moves, it moves, and then you can always make your adjustments, right? Uh, then we're going to turn it this way, and then we're going to come cross twice. And you're going to end up with this nice little cubes of tuna, right? Beautiful little tunas. Once we're at this stage, we're going to put it in a bowl. Um, I'm using my hands because I just washed my hands. Um, once it's in there, and I use the, the knife as a tool, not just to cut, but to move things around uh, and then just kind of like slide things off the plate. So, so far, tuna right here, right? Simple dish. Another great tool, spoon. You have it, I know you have it, and uh, I use it all the time. So tuna right here, then we have soy sauce and we have sesame seed oil, right? 
Which one's which? I don't know, because they look so much alike. So what do you do? You smell them. The one that smells like sesame seeds is the sesame seed oil. So we're going to start with the soy. Soy is going to carry you for flavor and salt. We're going to add a tablespoon of that. Sesame seed oil, especially this kind, which is toasted, uh, is very powerful. So don't go crazy with it. So you want to go yeah, about that much. Ginger paste. I found these cute little bowls. Aren't they adorable? And then this is ginger paste, which means it's just minced ginger. Uh, you can buy it like that, or you can make your own. We, we made it here, and someday, hopefully, I'll get to show you that. Uh, ginger, another thing that's going to give you spice and flavor. So don't go crazy with it. Remember, the star of the dish is the tuna. So we're going to add probably a quarter teaspoon of that. Salt, I'm going to wait, because soy sauce is here, right? Um, and then I love adding a little bit of, because we don't have that much oil in here, so we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil um, to put it together. Remember, if this was regular tuna, you would have mayo, so we want to keep it nice and moist. And then the element that's going to give you the crunch and the flavor as well is green onions. So green onions, we cut it. We cut the green and the white part, and we're going to add them in it. And don't be shy with the green onions. Uh, you want to do maybe for this amount about two tablespoons of them, and then we're going to mix it. Right? You want it to be nice and moist and flavorful. And uh, the way it looks right now, I think we're there. I'm going to grab one little piece and I'm going to taste it for salt. And I think it's awesome. So we're going to sort of park it here until we start assembling. So that is the tuna salad part of our dish, right? All right, we'll be back to assemble. Exciting times about to happen right here, right? So we have our tuna salad made, um, ahi tuna, not canned tuna, as you can see, and we have our awesome citrusy potato mash in Spanish or in, in Peru we call it causa. Uh, I guess causa would be the assembled dish, but that is the potato part of the causa. So uh, we're ready to assemble. To fancify it, so we're going to do a couple of cool things. We're going to layer it, and one layer that is traditional and I love is avocado, right? So we have some avocado here that we just slice. Uh, I heard somebody calling it uh, green gold, and I'm with it. I like it. Uh, so I'll call it avocado today, but you can call it green gold if you want. Um, and then you have to think of your plating, because this is kind of where we're going to, you know, you, you put all this work into this, so you, you want to get the fancy plate that you have in the very back. You know, don't get the paper plate. If you only have paper plate, then get the paper plate. But if you have something fancier, let's do it. I found this fancy little thing here. Um, and then we're going to use a ring mold. If you don't have a ring mold, that's it. Just stop what you're doing. No, just make it. However you want to make it, but make it. I'm using this because I have it. And basically, we're going to layer it here. A trick to make it come out of the ring mold is oil the ring mold a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in my hands. I do that even when I'm not cooking. And I'm going to rub a little bit on the sides or on the inside of the ring mold. A little bit more. Uh, and that's going to help releasing this, right? And then you're going to park it where you think you want your dish to end up, right? So if you want it on the side, then you put it on the side. If you want it in the middle, I think I'm feeling kind of like in the middle kind of a guy right now. So we're going to put it in the middle. And then you're going to come first with a layer of potato. Remember how we added the oil? So right now, and because I have a little bit of oil in my hands, so it's not sticking to my hands. It's sort of like a cool, cold, uh, edible uh, uh, plate, I guess. Don't tell that to my four-year-old, but... Then we're going to press it down, and we're going to come a little bit less than half if you find a ring mold. If you don't find a ring mold, and you make a lot of banana bread, right? So you have those loaf molds. You can just make it like that, put your potato there, put your filling, put your potato there, and then flip it and cut it into slices. Whatever you want to do. The last thing I want you to do is stop cooking because, oh my God, that guy just threw in a ring mold. I don't have one. Um, my life is over. No. So potato goes down. Don't take the ring mold out like I almost did right now. Uh, keep it in there. We're going to layer avocado. Avocado, avocado, avocado. got to love your avocado. After you layer this, the next thing we're going to do is season the avocado, right? Because avocados are great, but they're much better with salt. So we get a little bit of salt, and we're going to put it on the top of the avocado. I got some salt on the plate. Oh, well. Press your avocado down because we're making a layer thing. So think of a carrot cake and how pretty the layers look. So that's kind of what we're doing. 
carrot cake sounds really good right now. Uh, avocados are down, and then comes the, the, the filling for this, which is the tuna, right? So, this is a special day, so we're going to go a little bit generous with the tuna. But no so generous that, that you don't have room for a potato, right? So you want to do a, uh, a good layer of it. Press it down. And uh, kind of like that. And then we're going to come back with the potato. I like, as you can see, I sort of mold it a little bit uh, to match the shape. And once you have it in here, you can press it. You can probably go a little bit higher. This is the last layer, and we want to always put food. It looks better when you create height. So we are pressing down a little bit. And you want it kind of to be smooth in the top. And this should be the very enjoyable part of the process, right? Because you're almost there. Not quite there, but you're almost there. And you're creating this beautiful dish, right? Press, 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 press. And then at this point, you think you're done, but we have one more thing to do, which is uh, sort of decorated, but we're not just decorating for the sake of decorating so it looks better, we're decorating because it's going to add another layer of richness and flavor. So I had some aioli in my fridge. This happens to be a caper herb aioli. If you have mayo that comes in a jar, that's fine too. We're going to go with a dollar. Some people get grossed up by mayo. I am kind of a fan. So with the back of the spoon, we're just going to spread a little thin spread of mayo and then on top of that we're going to put a little bit of a crunch. Uh, we're fans of potatoes in Peru and we're also fans of a hard-boiled egg. So this is a mixture of red onion, hard-boiled egg and a little bit of chopped cilantro. We're going to lay it on top and the aioli is going to do two things or I guess three things. Add, it's going to add richness to it, it's going to add flavor to it and it's going to uh, sort of uh, be used as the glue or, you know, making sure that this sticks in there, right? So, if we've done everything right, I should be able to pull the ring mold and sort of show you how cool this dish is. And then we're gonna go with the fancy little piece of parsley. Uh, so we're gonna pull up. If it doesn't feel like it's coming out, don't worry, just wiggle it. Just a little bit, just wiggle it. And then you're gonna pull it up like that. And uh, that's pretty cool. Alright, so a little bit of parsley in there. And then I'm going to move it up so you can see it over here. It's going to bring it closer to you. And uh, that's it. That's causa comatun, which means, uh, like I explained a few times, it's a citrus potato filled with ahi tuna. So we made it a little fancy. Um, and then it has a topping of egg and red onion and cilantro chopped up. and and avocado in there. Great dish for any time as an appetizer. Great summer dish, great winter dish, easy to make, and I hope you enjoy it. My mom used to make it all the time, especially on the weekends. It's not a long process, but I was always a part of the process. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great appetizer. It's not sort of an entree. It could, I guess, be a side dish, but it's a great appetizer, especially in the summer months. But really, all year round, it's awesome. All right, Causa con Atun, our tuna dish is finished, and uh, it is my pleasure to taste it, right? So uh, remember, it, it's, it's such a cool dish, and it's not that difficult, but it looks difficult, right? So we, we are definitely impressing our, our friends. Please, please share this with your loved ones. We're coming in here, and I want to get a perfect bite, which is going to be potato, avocado, tuna, a little bit of that aioli on top, right? Mmm. It is so good. It's velvety. It's rich when it needs to be rich. I really, really, truly hope that you make this at home because it's so enjoyable to eat and I think you're going to impress your loved ones by making it. Thank you for taking a seat at my table today and I hope to see you soon.